out of a service. So many people, they have just switched uh, to Monero, which is like a big success for Monero. But I think the most rich crypto people will be like a Bitcoiners. And just the fact that you are rich doesn't mean that you are like a super powerful, but it definitely me means you are influential. So basically, you have enough money to change the world. And what is quite interesting to say that at the same time, many people, especially no coiners, most population, I mean, people who are still believe, believing on, in a traditional democratic system, all these people will stay poor because all these people, they, they will miss the crypto train and they will become victims of fiat inflation. So at the same time as we should expect a lot of uh, crypto aristocracy or Bitcoin aristocracy, we should expect that the majority of population will be no converse plebs. Maybe this sounds like a bit elitist, uh, elitist. I don't like it, but we should definitely expect new no corner plebs on the rise. One important information is that all these poor people, victims of um, inflation or hyperinflation, all these people, they still have majority of democratic power. So they still can vote and can uh, use the democratic power to change the system. Because basically, uh, the society in the future can be really polarized. There will be a lot of rich crypto people, a lot of uh, significantly much more plebs, like uh, no coiners. And because the political power will stay in the hands of these like uh, crypto plebs, they will lobby governments to change the system to survive in some way. I think it's very likely that there will be introduced UBI, Universal Basic Income, despite the fact that we can, uh, we can see that in many countries, in, it, it was tried in many countries like Canada, Finland, last time there was like a referendum in Switzerland, and all these countries that rejected UBI, I think UB, UBI will be introduced because it's quite likely that in the future, a lot of people, there, there will not be unemployed, but they will be unemployable. And what I think is that UBI will be introduced uh, with, uh, with CBDC, because the government will just ask, hey, do you want to just, do you want to like a, receive every month extra money, like a one, two thousand dollars extra money just for doing nothing. And most people, and most, people most people will say, yes, of course. And the government will say, okay, but you know that it's possible to receive them only using CBDC. You can only receive our digital euro. You can receive only our digital dollars. So I think this will happen. I think that UBI probably will, will be introduced with CBDC. And that be, uh, or CBDC will be introduced together with UBI uh, because most people, of course, they will want extra money from the government just to survive. And of course, most people in that situation, they won't care that they will be completely uh, spied and, uh, and monitored by the government. At the same time, we should expect um, that the government will lose their power in the virtual world, especially now because we have Monero, for example, which is truly anonymous cryptocurrency. Uh, and we should expect in the future there will be more truly anonymous crypto technologies in the future. And so, so I think the government, despite the fact that they will lose power in this virtual world, they still have really significant power in the physical world. And it means they will try to get as much as possible money and as much possible control from this physical world. So expect, for example, property tax will be significantly increased. The highest one now is in Belgium. Also, we should expect introduction of wealth tax. So these are the countries where you can see all these uh, orange and green countries, they have already introduced like a wealth tax. What does it mean, wealth tax? basically means 
when you have a lot of money in your bank account, you don't receive any interest from the bank account, but otherwise you are specially taxed just because you have a lot of money. Or if you, if you own like any kind of wealth and the government knows about this wealth, you just pay extra, uh, extra money from this wealth. Um, it is necessary, necessary to mention that also some cantons in Switzerland, for, exa for, for example, they have already introduced this wealth tax. And it'll be, it'll be worse. Personally, I expect that all these blue countries, you can see there, in the future, they will also introduce like a wealth tax, and they start to tax people uh, based on their wealth. Also, you should expect introduction of citizenship-based taxation, which is really evil, which basically means, for example, American citizens, citizens of Hungary, citizens, for example, of Kyrgyzstan, or citizens of Eritrea, you know, all these pink countries, uh, these countries are basically tax slaves. What means it doesn't matter where these people move, just because they are citizens of these countries, they have to declare and pay taxes from their worldwide uh, income. And it's quite likely that most countries, I mean, these dark blue ones and light blue ones, they will also switch to citizenship-based taxation. At least in these days, the country like Australia and the UK are considering to switch to citizenship-based taxation. So basically, all people can become, or most people can become uh, tax slaves with no possibility to live. Uh, we should be aware that to, to target crypto millionaires or this Bitcoin aristocracy, crypto aristocracy, uh, governments, they will use like a multiple methods. So the way how they can find the information about crypto millionaires is either according to the KYC purchases. So in the past, if you, if you use like a centralized crypto ex exchanges, I hope, I hope not. I believe like a, most of you are like monitor users and you, you don't use like any any KYC, like a centralized crypto exchanges. But anyway, if you use them, not only crypto exchanges, but the governments can know how much crypto, how much Monero, how much Bitcoin uh, you bought and you sold. Also, uh, they can find this information according to your crypto tax declaration. So if you live in the country where you have to pay taxes from crypto and you did some crypto tax declaration, of course, government know exactly how much crypto you have. And you should be prepared that this government institution can be hacked and all richest crypto people who declare their crypto can become victims of kidnappings, of violence, of really bad things. So for example, personally, I consider it to be really, really dangerous to do any crypto tax declaration. And that's exactly what I star started to be like a digital nomad. <coughs> and my uh, tax residency is a, a territorial taxation country, so I don't pay any taxes from crypto and I don't need legally. At the same time, the governments can target you according to the properties and visible wealth in the physical world. So when you, when you buy anything on your name, they can immediately find out that you are like a wealthy, rich person. And of course, if you buy a lot of things, if you have excessive consumption, and if you have like an excessive carbon footprint, because we, at least, for example, in Czech Republic and Slovakia, the banks, they already track your carbon footprint. So when you use your card, like debit cards or credit cards, they exactly know the, your carbon footprint. <clears throat> so, it means that it is absolutely crucial for you to avoid all KYC purchases and use decentralized KYC exchanges like uh, Havenodex, which is basically something like BISC, but based on Monero, uh, interesting project. You should uh, avoid crypto tax declaration. So I strongly recommend you to become a tax resident of digital taxation, or if you have to live in any tax hell country like a European Union country, you should leave from crypto loans. You should try to stay as much as possible low profile. So if you want to buy any properties, you should buy these properties on some anonymous entities, companies. It's still possible. 
You shouldn't have any fiat in your bank account, just minimum to survive. And I strongly recommend you to get second citizenship. It's, you, can, you can get it by naturalization, naturalization process, or, or by investment. Uh, now, in Caribbean countries, it's still possible to buy citizenship for one, 100, 150,000 K, uh, 100,000 uh, dollars. And from the next month, it will be double. So if you want to get like a good citizenship, you should try to do it as soon as possible. And you will need this second citizenship just because to have like a new identity which won't be associated with your banking or fiat history, for example. So they, can, they cannot find out where is your original country, your original tax residency, uh, or they can, they can penalize you according to your carbon credit, which probably will be in the future associated with your citizenship. Uh, the hunt for high profile crypto peers is already happening. You definitely know CZAT, Binance founder, who was arrested, Roger Ver, Bitcoin Jesus, also arrested, Ross Ulbrich was arrested many years ago. All these Bitcoin aristocracy people are already in jail. The question is who will be the next one? Uh, what we should know that in 2024, we have crypto wars like we had in the late of 90s. And this, it's crazy. We can see that uh, the government arrested Roman Storm Tornado cash developer, then arrested uh, people behind Samurai Wallet. Many other projects, they, 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 they got scared. So for example, my favorite project, Incognito, uh, is going to be shut down. Also, Wasabi switched all the fun uh, coinjoin functionality. Many wallets, they left the US and it'll be going worse. So especially, I think that's the main reason why now Mono is going up, because all these Bitcoin mixing service, they do not work anymore. So very crucial question is, can these crypto millionaires gain power, like a real power, before they're arrested in jail? Uh, fortunately, we, are st we still have a few examples where there are some individuals, like powerful indiv individuals, like a, uh, that were confronting with the large states publicly, for example, Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk ha uh, has a personal issue with Brazilian government because uh, he refused to censor, censor uh, some something what the Brazilian government wanted. Also, Apple, for example, won the case uh, over FBI. Also, we can, we, uh, we can see that CZ from Binance, uh, despite the like, uh, money laundering of billions of dollars, he basically ended up just for four months in, in prison, what is basically nothing. And Everybody of you sh should be, a be, be aware that sometimes in the future will become part of crypto aristocracy, even if you have just Monero or Bitcoin. And then it's very likely you will be potential victim of physical attacks, kidnapping, extortion. And it's very likely that like what is probably very normal or common in Mexico, you will need dedicated security services. Also, I expect that in the future there will be a completely new industry to help these crypto millionaires to buy things in a, in a physical world, in an anonymous way, like a real estate properties, companies. So, so all these crypto aristocracy can stay low profile. And most of these people, they also will buy or should buy multiple citizenship passports to have better legal protection. One interesting thing, you should be aware that crypto, especially Bitcoin or Monero, it doesn't matter, but decentralized crypto, is the historically the most powerful tool because it transferred the existing society of the first product, which we call like a collective society, the society 
when the collective, like the majority of people or the government, decides what should be paid, uh, will be transferred to individualistic society where it won't be possible to enforce taxation, for example, and which basically will mean that individual can decide what it should be paid. And many people can be afraid, okay, I don't like this new kind of tyranny of individuals. So the question is, is the new tyranny of individuals something we should be feared? No, I don't think so. Because uh, even now, like a crypto people, Monero people, Bitcoin people, millions of us, all these people are socially aware people, and they are supporting all social projects or pro necessary projects they consider to be important. Maybe I would like to mention a project like a pineapple fund, where some person uh, just dedicated, distributed more than 5,000 bitcoins to 60 charities. Also, another interesting project is the giving, giving block, where more than 170 millions of dollars were in crypto was distributed to multiple, multiple charities. Also, another project is like BitGive or UNICEF Cryptocurrency Fund. Okay, what about that? Maybe interesting question is, when will this new crypto aristocracy survive? And the answer is pretty simple. When crypto people will be enough rich or they will have enough resources to lobby politicians in this like authoritative government uh, system to, uh, to favor their interest over no coiners voters. Because if you know, like each politician basically uh, is trying to follow the interest of his sponsors, of his supporters, and secondary or thirdly uh, wishes of his voters, for example. Uh, it's very likely that big countries like European Union countries, the US, will be really against our crypto aristocracy. So we should expect there will be new countries, maybe Caribbean countries, uh, which will be like a Bitcoin friendly. Even now we have like a super Bitcoin friendly countries like El Salvador or Georgia. So it's quite likely that in the future, a lot of these, a lot of these people, they will move to these countries. And it's quite likely that countries like European Union countries and the US, which uh, basically will fire all these rich crypto aristocracy, and they, be, they will be anti-Bitcoin. They, they won't survive from the longer perspective. And of course, these Bitcoin-friendly Bitcoin country or crypto-friendly countries, they will, they will survive because, because this crypto aristocracy will bring them real money, real non-inflationary money. Many of you probably can say, hey, I don't like come back to these aristocratic times, but I, I would like to say it's not necessarily bad things. For example, we have the 10 richest countries in the world, Qatar, United uh, Arab, Arabic Emirates and Brunei, and these, country, ha, ha, these countries have the highest GDP per capita. Maybe you can say that, for example, UA, UAE, like a Dubai, has a lot of money from oil, but unfortunately, it's not true. Only 1% of GDP of Dubai is from oil. The most is just from doing business and tourism. The question is that if you have like a new crypto aristocratic countries, will these countries have enough or will provide these countries enough personal freedom to stay and to live in these countries? I strongly recommend you to read the book from Hans Hermann Hoppe. It's called De Democracy, the God that Failed, where it's like a really detailed rational explanation why 
monarchy or most monarchy are economically better system or better functional system than any democracy. The, the, one of the biggest threat to crypto itself is CBDC. You should be aware that the governments, or the, the central banks, they are trying to introduce CBDC as soon as possible. Because if they don't do that in the following years, and the most population will switch to crypto, to Lightning, Monero, or any crypto, cryptocurrency, in the future, Nobody will need fiat money, nobody will need central banks, and it, it, it will cause like a collapse of central, central banking system. And the, central, and the collapse of, of the central banking system can mean collapse of the nation state, of, of the traditional na nation states. So, so if the current nation states want to survive, they need to have central banking. They need to have the control over issuing their money. And then the only way how, how they can do that in this in these century is just to introduce their own digital, digital currency. So you should, be, you should perceive CBDC as a survival uh, fight of the current state. So, just summary, what I said till now. What should I do if I want to survive in this new dystopian world? Definitely, I recommend you to avoid any KYC. So don't buy any crypto the state knows about. Try to avoid any tax declaration in a legal way. So it basically means change your tax residency, for example, to Paraguay or any Panama, Uruguay, any good country. Or if you have to leave majority of your time, for example, in tax hell, for example, European Union countries, you have to leave from loan, from crypto loan. So use system like a Farfish, use system like a AAVE or MakerDAO or something like that, just to be able to not to trigger tax event and be able to survive. Try to avoid potential citizenship based taxation citizenship-based military service, citizenship-based carbon footprint, and to think how you can achieve it, just get a second citizenship. I strongly recommend you also to switch to a parallel, parallel world or parallel society, disconnect from uh, the current system as much as possible. For example, me personally, I don't have residency or any tax residency in European Union. I'm the resident of Prague and Panama. Uh, I don't use any European company, so, I'm trying also to stay low profile. I use many anonymous entities to own. And my last and the most important recommendation, stay safe, because it's very likely you will be a crypto millionaire too. The question is just when. That's all, thank you a lot.